Kathy Nichols, and I'm a lifelong artist, painter, and teacher. I help students of all ages tap into their creativity with watercolor. Watercolor is a great way to express yourself, and it's easy to get started and fun to do. My watercolor lessons are designed for beginners of all ages. No theory and not too technical. Just follow along with me. I hope you join me to learn how to paint with watercolor. I can't wait to see your paintings. Welcome to the next lesson in our bird portrait series. Some of our most popular lessons have been bird portraits. See our watercolor bird portrait playlist to see them all. I love watching kestrels as they perch and hover in search of their next meal. Their plumage is colorful and attractive. It makes them great painting subjects. We'll use three brushes, seven paints, and six techniques. Let's paint. Let's get started. Spray your pans of paint. Put some water in your palette. In this lesson, I did use a photograph to create a template. Here's the photograph. And to learn how or review how to make a template, go to my video. How to make a template with watercolor. Place your template in the middle of your page. Take your liner brush wet it and, and load your brush with yellow ochre. And then trace your template. Now take your liner and just wet it and soften the lines. Now let's work on placing where the eye will be. Now it, it is level to the beak here. And let's sketch it with cadmium yellow and a touch of cadmium red. Right there, go ahead and make a circle. Now there's some of that color above the beak. So go ahead and put some there.
like that. You put some below the beak too. Talk about that. And put some below the beak. Not that much. Just a faint. You don't want it as strong as above the beak. Like that. Now this bird has a lot of markings and there is some white on the head. And we will want to use the white space and not white paint with that. And this bird has a blue grayish color. So let's make that mixture. Take your liner brush and take your white and put some. As you can see, I already have some blue in my white and that's okay and load some of that white in there and put a touch of intense blue. You don't need that much, just a little bit. So start at the top of the head here and go down towards the eye, but there is a white spot above the eye. So don't go all the way down there. And then towards the back of the head, there's a start of another color. So go below that. And come down the neck here. To the back of the head. and makes a shape of like a stripe to the neck and then stop. Now there's another stripe but there's a white space between that stripe about right here. So start there and then go up towards the eye. Like that. So there's white here, white here, and there is a different color along here. And we'll come back and fill that in. Now there's some more of that color on the wing. And the wing starts about here. And there's a little white on that. So leave a little white on that wing.
stop and give it a good dry. Now, there's a little bit of that blue in the beak. So the, take your liner brush with the same color. And The blue is going to be the undercoat. We're going to go in later and darken that and leave some white spots well, right there. Now, let's go to a different part of the painting to work on. This spot right here is a rust kind of color. So to paint that space, take your liner brush and load with burnt sienna. And there's more of that color right here. Now, don't fill it in all the way. There's some, some more of this blue, gray, almost black color. If the spot where you are painting is too dark, just, you can fix that by wetting your brush and lifting some of that paint out. Like that. Looks, up, looks better. Now load your, let's switch brushes here for a moment. And take your round with pointed tip brush. And using burnt sienna. There is some of that color right here, but it's lighter. So let's add a little yellow ochre to our mixture. We don't want it so dark. Now, it starts to get a little lighter by the neck. So continue on around here to the back side. And paint that area. Now I purposely did not go all the way up because I want to dilute that paint and make it lighter and not as dark.
and go ahead and dab your paper towel and that will kind of that will give it a texture of feathers. Like that. Load your round with pointed tip brush and load it with the blue mixture. And paint the area by the back of the neck here. A lot of times in a painting in watercolor, there's layering and coating. So this blue, I'm waiting for it to dry, and you can wait for it to dry or blow dry, and we'll go in and darken it to more of a black. Now the, the rest orange color here goes all the way up. So take your round with pointed tip brush. So load your brush with burnt sienna. That's a little dark. But you can use some water to make it lighter. So that color connects right here. And the back here, the feathers are darker. Like that. Let's give it a good dry before we go on next. Switch brushes to your liner and let's work on the eye. Now the eye, there's this bright yellow and then there's a, the dark area of the pupil, which is, which is a black color. Take your liner brush and mix. Take your liner brush with ultramarine blue and burnt umber. And paint the pupil.
Now, there are some shadows here around the eye. So, paint a little shadow around the eye. And then there is a dark space right there. And some of that dark color comes down in this stripe here where the blue is. And some of the blue might show through and that's okay. And then carry some of that up above. And then down below. To here like that so I see this area could use more burnt umber So we will want to take some of that color and come to this area here. So in these stripes, there is a darker color here, almost black, as it comes down here and along here and here. Load your liner brush with burnt umber and ultramarine blue. And darken it right here. And along this other side of the neck. Take your liner brush with that same mixture now on this bird it, it has spots so take your your liner brush and put some spots on the breast And on the wing here, and some along the back. Just randomly put a few in what looks right. And pause at times to look to see if you need to add more. It really does help to pause, step back and look, and as I am looking at it, I need more spots here. I 
like that. And do one more there. And one more there. And one there. Now let's take with this mixture the beak. Now there's, you want to leave some of that blue and the beak gets lighter as it, as you work towards the center here. And then do some below and carry it down here. And next, dilute your brush and just there's a little bit of shadow there. You want to make it faint, just really faint, like that. Now, this part here, there's a circle. So with this dark mixture, make a circle about right here. Whoops, that's a little big, but that is an easy fix. Just dilute your brush and there's just a faint Faint little shape there. Now I'm having a little trouble with this, and to fix it, I'm you can take some of the cadmium yellow. Cadmium red and go back and put some of that bright color around the circle. Now I see as I look at my painting, some of that blue carries a further down on the head. And I have some of that mixture on my palette. And you can take some of that color and carry it further down. Like that, that looks better. Then as I step back and look at this, I see this right here is too much of a line. I want it more gradual. So to correct that, you can re-wet re the area. And that erase the line. And I think that it needs a little more of the color. Okay. Which is some of the, which the mixture is the burnt sienna and the yellow ochre.
And a lot of times you just have to play with the paint to see what it does. And to me, that's the fun of watercolor, is to see what happens. Now that looks better. It doesn't look so disconnected, I would say. And I think I need to carry this line a little bit further up. Step back and look at it, take it in, and I like the overall, overall look of this painting, so... <laughs> so you can choose to leave it in relief like this that is really a personal preference or you could create a background which I am going to do now first take your flat brush and carefully wet the area around the bird And to create a wash, I like using my mop brush. And load it with intense blue. Now that's kind of strong, but let's work with it. And have your paper towel ready. Okay, I'm switching to my liner brush. There's some delicate areas here and it's easier to use your liner brush. And just take some of that wet paint and go carefully around the bird. Now, this is fun as you can take your spray bottle and kind of wet it to create some shapes or to take more of the paint off and then dab it. I like the blue because this bird is in the sky a lot.
and keep dabbing until you get the right texture that you want. Again, if it's too dark, you can get it wet and change it. And that's the fun to me of watercolor. Or even take your paper towel here and wet it and kind of scrub the paper to get some of the color out if there's too much. So here I see some dark spots that I don't like. And sometimes using the paper towel does not do the job. Sometimes it's better to do it with a brush. And I don't like it how there. Now, sometimes you might struggle getting it totally out. And there is kind of a line there that I don't like. And sometimes if there's a point where it just doesn't work, you can always use some of your white here. Now I'm using the white to not make that line so visible.
my bird is sitting on a tree branch and I like how it looks. It's a beautiful, striking bird. Thank you for joining me. I hope to see you next time. Join me next time when we'll have some more creative fun. To give watercolor a try, please give a thumbs up, subscribe, and take a lesson or two. Take care, be safe, and see you soon. Thank you.